maybe is it down there? Oh, uh, this is that one. There we go. Okay. So since it's creating likable characters for fan fiction and original works, we're going to talk about how to strengthen your character as an individual and how to get readers to like your character in both fan fiction and original, because sometimes those are not the same thing. Um, first of all, I mean, I hope you'll forgive me because I'm going to try and write on the board and read my notes at the same time. So let's see if we can... And stay, and stay at the microphone, so we'll do the best we can. Um, so first of all, I want to define three, three terms that I'm going to be using today. First of all, we're going to talk about Mary Sue's. Does everybody know, oh, yes. know what those are? Mm -hmm. Anybody who doesn't, earlier. doesn't know? Well, they had a panel earlier today. Yeah, okay. Just really quickly, I don't always define them as everybody defines them. Some people say that is just a horrible character. Um, for me, a Mary Sue is just the cliche girl comes in to fan fiction, everybody likes her, romance ensues, happy ending. Mm -hmm. So even a really good story written well with that kind of character is a Mary Sue to me. I don't think it's a derogatory term. Wait, are I we just... talking about Twilight? <clears throat> yeah. yeah, so Twilight can be a Mary Sue in my definition, okay? <laughs> um, I've read some good Mary Sues and I've read some really bad ones, uh, but but they all play kind of the same role in the same type of story. Um, and I'm not really gonna try and bash on them because we're gonna try and help you guys build and not tear down. So um, I'm just trying to help you guys uh, understand my definitions. And the next is the, what they call it? The OC, the original character. Sometimes I call them fan characters. And some people say that OCs are better than Mary Sue's because the story is better. But like I said, when I say when I say Mary Sue, I just mean they take that cliche role in the story. It can be a Mary Sue, an OC, an original character, a fan character. If I say any of those things, I'm kind of talking about the same general thing. I'm not trying to call one worse than the other. It just means you made up a character and you stuck them in a world that was already created. <coughs> and the last thing is canon character, which means the character has already been created and you're just sticking, uh, the characters from the show are canon characters. So the difference between canon and original, that's what I mean. So you guys don't get confused when I start spouting words. Okay, so building our character, the first thing we're going to do is make a bio. Mm. Everyone knows how to do this. Everyone has done it. I see, I'm on DeviantArt. I see a lot of people posting bios for their characters on DeviantArt. That does not help anybody. We don't care. <laughs> anybody can write a really good bio. Most of them are pretty good. Yes? You know, that's not true. I do a lot of commission work, and I like to know the character's background so I can get a feel and put the emotion. Oh, yes, yes. I actually, when I do commissions, I ask them to, yes. But I, I'm, so, so you're, you're positively correct, but I'm saying as far as the story goes, this is not your end product. <laughs> Just because you wrote a really good bio does not mean your story and your character is going to be absolutely amazing. The trick is the portrayal in the story itself. So this, these are, I mean, the bio is pretty much for your notes, or if you're doing a commission, for your artist's notes, so they know what they're doing. Um, it, it's for you. It's not for your readers. Your readers doesn't. Your readers don't have to know about this kind of stuff. You're supposed to tell it to them in the story. You're not supposed to say, okay, you're going to read a story about this character, and she's 16, and she has blonde hair, and she does this, and she likes that. That's not how it works. Um, so, but we're going to talk about what goes into the bio because when you make a character, you have to be consistent. You can't make them blonde one chapter and brunette the next chapter and make them sure. happy in one chapter and sad in another chapter for no reason. So we're going to just talk about the bio and what goes in it really quick. Um, so we got physical appearance and I can kind of spell it. Physical appearance, A -P -P. personality, background. And these are all pretty much, um, they're self-explanatory. You guys know what these words mean. 
Um, pick something and stick to it. These are for your notes. So when you decide where she, where she was born or what type of family she had, you keep it the same throughout the entire story. If she had a happy childhood, she doesn't suddenly have a sad childhood, and so on. And also, I see a lot of people doing this. Just because you put it in your bio does not necessarily mean it's going to go in the story. Don't fight the story to put extra things in. Like, oh, by the way, I totally hate tomatoes, but I love this, and then, 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 Nobody cares. If it's not, I mean, if you have a funny scene about it, you know, but it, if they're just talking just to prove that you thought about it, not good storytelling at all. Very last thing in your bio, and a lot of people forget this. Drive. The characters drive. Mm -hmm. This is how you get your audience to fall in love with your character, is to define the drive. The drive is what does the character want and what are they willing to do to get it. The, the guy who wrote uh, Part of Your World for The Little Mermaid, he said every musical has a song where the heroine sings about what she wants and that's when the audience falls in love with her. So you need to define um, what your character is trying to do in the story and what they're willing to give or not give to do it. Uh, let's see, what do I have for that? This also kind of helps you define your character. If you are solid in the drive, you can kind of fudge this other stuff. Or this other stuff can actually come in later once you've developed this. We're going to talk about Disney a little bit. Um, the you guys all seen The Princess and the Frog? Yeah. What was her drive? She wanted a restaurant. And while that, that didn't play very much into the plot, um, the plot was she got turned into a frog and she's trying to get to turn back. But the drive told us what kind of background she came from. It told us, uh, you know, she's very, very family in her era, ooh, oriented. She, you know, she's very, um, she cared about her family. She, you know, cared about her dad, her personality. Uh, she's very driven very hardworking, very serious. And you know, when you figure out the drive, this kind of stuff will just fall in. Um, if we go to Tangled, what was her drive? See the, see the lights. She wanted to see the lights, which was the whole plot. <laughs> and we found out she's willing to kidnap and blackmail a person for her drive. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> so it accidentally you know, kidnapped. Yeah, accidentally, accidentally kidnap and blackmail a person for her drive. So it, it can really push your story, and, and that's, this is how we can root for the character. When we know what they want and what they're trying to get, you know, we can be like, go get it, go get it, because we all know what it feels like to want something and to work for it. And sometimes they get it and sometimes they don't, but suddenly the reader is emotionally involved in the character. And they can and they can root for the character for whatever they're doing. <coughs> Excuse me. But characters don't always have to be driven. We go to Harry Potter, especially at the beginning. He's not a very driven character, yet he's the main character. But uh, a lot of people are telling him what to do, and he just kind of sits there. He's wait. He's waiting for his drive. He gets it later. Sort of. Um, yeah, sort of. But he's sort of. he's he's kind of a plot-driven character. Other people come up to him, and they're like, "Well, this is who you are, and this is your past, and this is what needs to be done." And he just goes and does it. So your char your even your main character doesn't necessarily have to have a major drive. Um, there's there's a lot of like the the reluctant heroes that don't have any drive, like uh, Eugene from Tangled. He doesn't. He still has his other drive, but but when it comes to being caught up in the plot, he doesn't really want to do anything. So so your character doesn't necessarily have to have a drive, but when we find out in the story what they need to do, it still helps you get involved. I mean, you still want to root for Harry Potter and, and help him do whatever it is. He needs to do for how many books? Seven, eight, nine, ten? <laughs> many, many books. Okay, now we're gonna go to the setting. 
Um, you may not think this has anything to do with the character, and it doesn't a whole lot. Um, it can kind of go back to background and personality, where they lived, how they grew up, will affect the character. Where they are will, fed, will more affect the tone of the story. But as far as, we'll say, adding fan fiction characters into a story, the character has to fit the setting. They have to feel like they're a part of the world. If they, and, and Mary Sue's especially do this, they come in and they have magical powers and crazy hair and like two different colored eyes and pets that talk and sometimes it's okay. If it was a Sailor Moon character, she came in and she had an animal that talked, that would be fine. That's acceptable in Sailor Moon. It's not acceptable in, like, say, a high school comedy or something. I don't something, know. Sailor Moon built her own setting, kind of. Yeah, you know? yeah. So, and so, different realities have different um, rules, but your character has to follow those rules. If it's not realistic that they be some like alien space princess, they can't be, or else the reader will start to feel alienated. And uh, it's harder with with you know the fan fiction original stories. The world is yours. You set the rules, and it's, it's easier to follow them, but when you're writing a fan fiction, you have to understand the rules of the world so that you can abide by them, and so your readers aren't like, what the crap is this? Have you guys even seen the show? You know, type thing. So setting, setting is, well, we talked about setting is place and time. If the setting happens in a fictional world, make sure you just understand the world if it's a fan fiction. Um, you know, what kind of animals in it, what kind of technology is in it, that kind of thing. Um, you may also want to keep in mind, in fan fiction, does it happen after this series? Is it in the middle of the series? Is it after the, the OAV? You know, anything like that. Some people even don't think about the season, the type of time of year. It's usually in the summer unless it's a Christmas story. So you, you may want to consider, does your story from beginning to end, does it take place in a week? Does it take place in a year, two years, a month? You, you'll at least want to keep that in mind because if you have your crap together, people are more comfortable because they know that you know what you're doing. You have a yeah, that's with my writing, you know, I guess. The, and I have this deal, people are driving around, I guess the uh, comic thing, you know, the roof gets shoot off the car, so it's like a convertible. Uh -huh. And then I remember it's, Actually, the setting is in January, so I had to really deal in, you know, the people are freezing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Can't, gotta keep that in mind. Um, so we talked yeah. about, do, 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 where's my, the reality. Um, even, yeah. I have a question though about some fan fiction, writers like to write AU fan fiction. Uh -huh. How does setting apply to those people that can carry Yeah, um, that's a pretty good question. As far as AU actually. goes, uh, you better at the very beginning establish exactly what your setting is. It is up to you. You get to choose the setting in an AU. Um, but you need to... Consistency is the magic word. I probably should write it in big letters across the board. Whatever you choose to do, stick with it. Um, if, if the setting is different but it's still a real setting, you should research the area at least a little bit. So you know it's, you know it's like... Uh, you know, monuments, buildings, companies, whatever, so you can kind of prove that you know a little bit about the city. But yeah, pretty pretty much, the sky's the limit with AU. Just, you just have to make sure you know whatever world you're putting them in and stick to it. Does that help? Yeah, and keeping characters in character basically helps too, right? Even if it's an AU setting. That's the point. Um, my defin everybody defines AUs differently. My definition of AU is different setting, same personalities. Mm -hmm. And not and I really think people are kind of copping out when they claim their AU um, when they, they have an AU and people call them on the characters and they're like, no, no, it's an AU and it's like, no, it's bad writing. The character <laughs> has to stay the way they are yeah, that was and you change, you change the situation. If you use a character, you have to, otherwise it's not the character. What's AR? Alternate reality. They isn't that the same thing? Well, alternate reality can use the same world and things and just change certain parts. Well, there's 
Oh, oh, okay. I okay, I know, I know what you're saying. I've seen, uh, we'll, we'll get to your question in a second. No, we're good. Okay, as far as like changing, I've, I've seen stories where they like change characters who died and they kept them alive. Um, I've seen them take characters from different walks of life and then they switch them and play the story again. Um, in that case, especially that one, you can change the personalities to an extent because they grew up in different situations. And your background really kind of defines who you are, how you grew up. And so obviously, um, you're going to be a little different if you grew up in a different place. But the core of a personality will always be there. If they're a driven, hardworking character, they will always be a driven, hardworking character. If they're kind of a scared, shy character, they'll always kind of be that way. You know what I mean? Does that, does that make sense? They're still, you know. And it's up to the readers, really. If the readers still feel like you're writing about the characters that they know, then you won. You did it right. If they don't, then, you know, you listen to their critiques a little bit and see if they have something interesting or, you know, something that will help you. You first and then you. Oh, I don't know what you're going to say. Hey. Yeah. Um, I just, I don't know. I guess I just want to ask your opinion in general. Um, I've read some Harry Potter fan fiction where, like, the characters are able to develop strengths and weaknesses they don't develop in the book but like they have this huge character development process and it makes it really believable but they're still you know at heart the same mm -hmm. what do you think about those ones where you can see the whole change like do you think that's okay or does that really like character growth is the reason you write a story well that's yeah that's kind of yeah. what i figured and honestly it's... but Pretty, you know, the magic word, I should put up, consistency. If, if the change is believable, if the, if the reader went so to the character really all the way, and the it makes sense, itself. like, you know, all the trials they went through, you yeah. understand why their personality changes and, and why they grew because of what happened to them, yeah, that's I've, good storytelling. I've read Harry Potter ones where after a certain person dies, <laughs> he really steps up because, like, nobody else is doing it. And, mm -hmm. like some of those are actually really good so yeah yeah harry potter likes to do a lot i heard they like to have him be raised by voldemort after yeah. <laughs> they, after he killed their parents really? i've heard i've heard that's they a popular have, there's plot. actually quite a few yeah. of those yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. In fact, I was actually going to say, like, exactly what she said. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, well, yeah, I, I just, I think that character is love to the story. Yeah. We're gonna get to character development, actually. Okay, I was just so, wondering, like, so yes, you, were you guys talking are about the like right. out of character people. Yeah. Right? yeah. yeah. So and, and really, I mean, we can all try our best yeah, to keep no, the canon characters yeah, in character, but you never know how other people perceive the characters. And some of them, I really like the older stuff, and a lot of the characters are pretty flat. So I try to flesh them out and you never know if the reader is going to agree with what you did because there's so little to work with in the beginning. But pretty much if your readers are like, yeah, I felt like I was reading about my favorite character and you didn't change it, then you won. Then you win. You are, you are the winner in this. So, um, so reality. Um, reality is actually very important um, writing any type of story. Even, I know Warner Brothers, they, when they create a new animated series, they make a Bible. And it has all the rules of the, of the universe in it, pretty much, so that they can make sure that they stay consistent when they write their stories. And uh, when they came out with the Batman animated series in the 90s, they were constantly, you know, is this believable? Is this believable? Batman has to be somewhat believable. And then they went and they did the Superman series, and they're like, oh, pff, Superman, we can get away with so much more. You know, we can have dinosaurs and aliens, and you know, so they, they were like throwing stuff all over the place. And then they did um, Freakazoid. You, are you guys familiar with Freakazoid? Freakazoid did not have a Bible because everything goes in Freakazoid. They didn't even have an origin story when they started, they just started making episodes. So, you know. It, it depends on the tone and what you're trying to do, how many rules are in the reality, but you need to pick them, stick with them, because when you break the rules of the reality in your story, it throws the reader off, and they're kind of like, what, you know, and it's distracting, and it can, you know, make people lose interest, so you want to at least make sure you know what you're doing, and, and you understand the world that you're building. <laughs>